Paul Winchell was an American ventriloquist, comedian, actor, voice actor, humanitarian and inventor whose career flourished in the 1950s and 1960s. From 1950 Euro 1954, he hosted The Paul Winchell Show, which also used two other titles during its primetime run on NBC, The Sveidel Show, and What's My Name. From 1965 a Euro 1968, Winchell hosted the children's television series, Winchell Mahoney Time. Winchell made guest appearances on Emmy Award-winning television series from the late 1950s to the mid-1970s, such as Perry Mason, The Dick Van Dyke Show, Macmillan and Wife, The Donna Reed Show, and two appearances as Homer Winchell on the Beverly Hillbillies in 1962. In animation, he was the original voice of Tigger, Dick Dastardly, Gargamel, and other characters. Winchell, who had medical training, was also an inventor, becoming the first person to build and patent a mechanical artificial heart, implantable in the chest cavity. He has been honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for his work in television. Early life, Winchell was born Paul Wilczynski in New York City on December 21, 1922 to Solomon Wilczynski and Clara Fuchs. His father was a tailor. His grandparents were Jewish immigrants from Russian Poland and Austria-Hungary. Winchell's initial ambition was to become a doctor, but the Depression wiped out any chance of his family's ability to afford medical school tuition. At age 13, he contracted polio. While recovering, he happened upon a magazine advertisement offering a ventriloquism kit for 10 cents. Back at school, he asked his art teacher, Gerald Magan, if he could receive class credit for creating a ventriloquist's dummy. Mr. Magan was agreeable, and Winchell named his creation Jerry Mahoney, by way of thanks. Winchell went back to reading magazines, gathering jokes from them and putting together a comedy routine, which he then took to the Major Bose Amateur Hour in 1938, winning first prize. A touring offer, playing various theaters with the Major Bose Review, was part of the prize. Band leader Ted Weems saw the young Winchell while on tour. He visited Winchell and made him an offer of employment. Winchell accepted and became a professional at age 14. Entertainment career. Equals ventriloquist work equals. Winchell's best-known ventriloquist dummies were Jerry Mahoney and Knucklehead Smith. Mahoney was carved by Chicago-based figure maker Frank Marshall. Sometime later Winchell had bars with copies of Jerry's head made by a commercial duplicating service. One became the upgraded Jerry Mahoney that is seen primarily throughout Winchell's television career. The television versions of Jerry and Knucklehead also featured Winchell's innovation of actors slipping their hands into the sleeves of the dummies, giving the visual effect of gesturing with their hands while conversing with each other. He modified two other copies to create Knucklehead Smith. The original Marshall Jerry Mahoney and one copy of Knucklehead Smith are in storage at the Smithsonian Institution. The other two figures are in the collection of illusionist David Copperfield. Winchell's first show as a ventriloquist was on radio with Jerry Mahoney in 1943. The program was short-lived, however, as he was overshadowed by Edgar Bergen. Winchell also created Oswald, a character that resembled Humpty Dumpty. The effect was accomplished by painting eyes and a nose on his chin, then adding a body covering the rest of his face, and finally electronically turning the camera image upside down. In 1961, Berwin novelties introduced a home version of the character that included an Oswald body, creative pencils to draw the eyes and nose and a magic mirror that automatically turned a reflection upside down. In 1948, Winchell and Joseph Dunninger were featured on Floor Show on NBC recorded via Kinescope and replayed on WNBQ-TV in Chicago, Illinois, the 8.30-9 p.m. Central Time show on Thursdays was the station's first midweek program. During the 1950s, Winchell hosted children's and adult programs with his figures for NBC television, and later for syndication. The NBC Saturday morning program, sponsored by Tootsie Roll, featured a clubhouse motif and a theme song co-written by Winchell and his longtime band leader and on-air sidekick, Milton Delug. The theme song was entitled Hooray, Hurrah, which featured the secret password Scully Wally D-O-O-D-O-O. -O -O -O. An ending song entitled Friends, Friends, 
Friends was sung by the children in the audience. On one episode, the Three Stooges appeared on the show to promote their joint feature film venture, Stop, Look, and Laugh, in late 1959. He made an appearance on Nanny and the Professor as a mean old man. In 1996, Winchell contracted with figure maker Tim Selberg to construct a more contemporary version of Jerry Mahoney, which Winch described as Disney-esque. Winchell used the new figure version to pitch a new TV series idea to Michael Eisner. In 2009 Winchell was featured in the comedy documentary I'm No Dummy, directed by Brian W. Simon. Equals voice acting equals, Winchell's career after 1968 included various voice roles for animated television series. For Hanna-Barbera, he played the character Dick Dastardly in multiple series. Clyde and Softy on Wacky Races and the Perils of Penelope Pit Stop. And Flegel on the Banana Splits Adventure Hour, and Gargamel on the Smurfs. He also provided the voice of Bubai Bear in Help. It's the Hair Bear Bunch. In 1971, the voice of Revs on Wheelie and the Chopper Bunch, as Moe on the Robonic Stooges, and Shake on the Sea Bears. In 1973, he did the voice of Goober the Dog on the HB show Goober and the Ghost Chasers and also guest starred as the rain-making villain on an episode of Hong Kong Fooey. For Disney, Winchell voiced the character Tigger in Disney's Winnie the Pooh films, and won a Grammy Award for his performance in Winnie the Pooh and Tigger 2. Beginning with the television series The New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, he alternated in the role with Jim Cummings, the current voice of Pooh. Winchell's final performance as Tigger was in 1999 in Winnie the Pooh, A Valentine for You. Following his retirement, Cummings permanently took over the role of Tigger starting with Sing a Song with Pooh Bear in 1999. Other Disney roles included parts in the Aristocats as a Siamese cat named Shun Gon, and the Fox and the Hound as Boomer the Woodpecker. He was also the original voice of Zummy Gummy on the TV series Disney's Adventures of the Gummy Bears for seasons 1 a year 05. Jim Cummings took over for the final season in 1990. Winchell provided the voices of Sam Iam and the unnamed character Sam Pesters in Green Eggs and Ham from the animated television special Dr. Seuss on the Loose in 1973. He played Fleabag on The Oddball Couple. Phyllis Freddy the Shark Hunter on the Pink Panther spin-off Mr. Jaw in 1976, as well as a number of one-shot characters in the Blue Razor series. In commercials, he voiced the character of Burger Chef for the fast food chain of the same name, the Scrubbing Bubbles for Dow Chemicals and Mr. Owl for Tootsie Roll Pops. From 1981 a Euro 1989, Winchell voiced Gargamel on the Smurfs as well as on several Smurfs television movies. During the 1980s, he was called upon by Hanna-Barbera to reprise his role of Dick Dastardly on Yogi's Treasure Hunt and later on Wake, Rattle and Roll. Also on the animated movie Yogi Bear and the Magical Flight of the Spruce Goose, he did the voice of the Dread Baron, who was previously voiced by John Stevenson on the Laugh Olympics. The evil character is incredibly similar to Dastardly, including having a canine henchman Mumbly, voiced by Don Messick. Equals live action work equals, Winchell was a frequent guest panelist on What's My Line? in 1956. Other work included on camera guest appearances on such series as The Polly Bergen Show, as Homer Winch on The Beverly Hillbillies, The Virginian, The Lucy Show, The Donna Reed Show, Claude Wilbur on The Dick Van Dyke Show, Dan Raven, and The Brady Bunch, as well as a 1960 movie that included a compilation of Three Stooges shorts and a part in the Jerry Lewis movie Which Way to the Front? Winchell appeared as himself in 1963 in the NBC game show Your First Impression. He appeared in the late 1960s in a sketch on Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In as a French ventriloquist named Lucky Pierre, who has the misfortune of having his elderly dummy die of a heart attack in the middle of his act. On Love, American Style he appeared with fellow ventriloquist Shari Lewis in a sketch about two shy people in a waiting room who choose to introduce themselves to each other through their dummies. Equals Winchell Mahoney Time equals, Winchell's most successful TV show was Winchell Mahoney Time, a children's show written by his then-wife, actress Nina Russell. Winchell played several on-screen characters, including Knucklehead Smith's father, Bonehead Smith. He also played himself as friend and adult advisor to Mahoney and Smith. 
he also created Mr. Goody Good, a surreal character, by painting eyes and a nose on his chin, covering his face with his small costume, then having the camera image inverted. The resulting pin-headed character seemed to have an immensely wide mouth and a highly mobile head. Winchell created this illusion by moving his chin back and forth. The show was produced at KTTV in Los Angeles, which was owned by Metro Media. Winchell started negotiating with Metro Media in 1970 to syndicate the 305 color segments of the show, but nothing came of it. Finally, Winchell offered to purchase the tapes outright for $100,000. Metro Media responded with an ultimatum. Agree on a syndication plan or the tapes will be destroyed. When Winchell did not agree, Metro Media carried out with its threat and the tapes were erased and destroyed. Winchell sued Metro Media and in 1986 a jury awarded him $3.8 million for the value of the tapes and $14 million in punitive damages against Metro Media. Metro Media appealed the award all the way to the Supreme Court but was unsuccessful. Winchell's last regular on-camera TV appearances working with his puppets was Storybook Squares, a children's version of the adult celebrity game show Hollywood Squares which was seen Saturday mornings on NBC during the 1969 TV season, and Runaround, another children's TV game show seen Saturday mornings on NBC from September 1972 to September 1973. Other pursuits. Equals medical and patents equals, Winchell was interested in medicine and was a pre-med student at Columbia University. He graduated from the Acupuncture Research College of Los Angeles in 1974, and became an acupuncturist. He also worked as a medical hypnotist at the Gibbs Institute in Hollywood. Winchell developed over 30 patents in his lifetime. He invented an artificial heart with the assistance of Dr. Henry Heimleich, the inventor of the Heimleich maneuver, and held an early but not the first U.S. patent for such a device. The University of Utah developed a similar apparatus around the same time, but when they tried to patent it, Winchell's heart was cited as prior art. The university requested that Winchell donate the heart to the University of Utah, which he did. There is some debate as to how much of Winchell's design Dr. Robert Jarvik used in creating Jarvik's artificial heart. Dr. Himleich states, I saw the heart, I saw the patent and I saw the letters. The basic principle used in Winchell's heart and Jarvik's heart is exactly the same. Jarvik denies that any of Winchell's design elements were incorporated into the device he fabricated for humans a Euro the Jarvik 7 which was successfully implanted into Barney Clark in 1982. Winchell established more medical patents while working on projects for the Leukemia Society and the American Red Cross. Some of the other devices he invented and patented include a disposable razor, a blood plasma defroster, a flameless cigarette lighter, an invisible garter belt, a fountain pen with a retractable tip, and battery-heated gloves. Equals humanitarian efforts equals in the 1980s Winchell, concerned about the starvation in Africa, developed a method to cultivate tilapia fish in tribal villages and small communities. The fish thrives in brackish waters, which made it particularly well suited for sub-Saharan Africa. Winchell appeared before a congressional committee with several other celebrities, including actors Richard Dreyfuss and Ed Osner, and Dr. Henry Haim Leitch. The committee declined to finance a pilot program for the Tilapia Aquaculture Project because it required digging a well into non-potable water, which the committee deemed to be inadvisable. Personal life equals family and hobbies equals Winchell had three children, a son, Stacy Paul Winchell, a daughter, Stephanie, from his first marriage to Dorothy Movitz, and a daughter, April Winchell, who is a comedian and voice actress from his second marriage to actress Nina Russell. His third wife was the former Jean Freeman. Winchell's autobiography, Winch, exposed many dark areas of Winchell's life, which had hitherto been kept private, including early stories of an abused childhood, a long history of depression and at least one mental breakdown and a short stint in an institution. The autobiography opened old wounds within the Winchell family, prompting daughter April to publicly defend her mother who was negatively portrayed in the book. Winchell was estranged from his children, and thus they were not immediately notified of his death. A message on April's website stated, 
I got a phone call a few minutes ago, telling me that my father passed away yesterday. A source close to my dad, or at least, closer than I was, decided to tell me himself, instead of letting me find out on the news, which I appreciate. Apparently a decision had been made not to tell me, or my father's other children. My father was a very troubled and unhappy man. If there is another place after this one, it is my hope that he now has the peace that eluded him on earth. Winchell was interested and involved in technology right up to the time of his death. He created and maintained a personal website until 2004. For a short time, he operated the now defunct website ProtectGod.com, which discussed the theology of the latter years of his life. Death Winchell died of natural causes on June 24, 2005, at his Los Angeles, California home, only one day before his friend John Fiedler, the original voice of Piglet and Disney's Winnie the Pooh Productions, died of cancer. Paul was survived by his wife, daughter April, his other children, and three grandchildren. His body was cremated and his ashes remained on his home property. Filmography equals Film equals equals television equals equals theme parks equals references external links obituary by mark evania paul winchell at the internet movie database paul winchell at find a grave paul winchell.com website at the wayback machine paulsprotectgod.com website at the wayback machine